Good morning, YouTube, and welcome back to the channel. Now, a couple of years ago, I came to Great Sand Dunes National Park to shoot some landscape photography, and I got completely skunked. <laughs> I tried camping out in the uh, campground and hiking up for sunrise. I wasn't able to get up fast enough, and uh, the conditions really just weren't that good. But in that video, I said this. Uh, the most success I've ever had here was when I camped out in the dunes. Um, it was a slog getting out there with, the, with all the equipment, but waking up for sunrise and you're able to just start walking east until you find a composition is really the way to go. Um, so maybe I'll do that again next time. Well, today's the day. I've got a backcountry permit for the next two nights, so I'm camping out here in the dunes and that's gonna give us some great opportunities to get some beautiful landscape images. The weather for the next two days should be interesting. <laughs> We're supposed to have thunderstorms tonight, which is gonna turn into snow. The rangers are expecting a few inches of snow uh, and then it's supposed to continue on and off thunderstorms to partly cloudy for the next few days. It's gonna be cold, it's gonna be windy, it's gonna be wet but it just might be epic. Probably won't be, <laughs> but it just might be. Even already, you can see we're getting some beautiful light on these dunes behind me, and this is where I'm gonna set up my tent. And I picked this spot because it's right at this bowl at the back of a huge dune. It gives me a view of the entire dune range, and I have these massive, gorgeous dunes here behind me. And whether or not I get light on the peaks, the dunes themselves are gonna be interesting enough. If the peaks do work out and we get some fresh snow and beautiful light, I can incorporate them very easily. So I think this spot here is gonna be the optimal position for me to have the uh, best opportunity for success. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead, quit jibber jabber and get my tent set up. We've got about three hours until sunset. And as you can see, the wind is absolutely brutal, which is great because what it's doing is it's pushing all the sand across the tops of these dunes here. And it's just giving a ton of dynamic interest into the scene. And what I love is these dark storm clouds that are passing over and the sun is setting on this side. So you get beautiful light hitting the sides of the dunes and then these dark foreboding clouds in the background. And as a matter of fact, as I say that, I think I'm gonna hold off. I think I'm gonna hold off on setting up the tent. I gotta capture an image first. <laughs> I'm gonna run to the top of this dune here. I gotta see what I can get. This is the last thing you wanna do in the sand dunes when it's chucking wind, is change lenses, but this is my backup camera now. I have a new camera we'll talk about in a future video, and I specifically didn't bring it <laughs> on this trip for exactly this reason. So this camera will be the one that I continue to use and abuse, and I'll baby the new one for a little while. Switching over to the 70 to 200. Oh, wow. Yeah, the telephoto is the way to go. This is just gorgeous. That light could not be softer. It's just beautiful. And I know I should go set up my tent, but this is a lot more fun. <sighs> okay, that sun's coming out. I'm just gonna give it a couple more minutes because as that sun peeks out from behind this cloud, those last few seconds where the cloud is just barely covering the sun should give us the ideal light. Okay. So as that sun peeked through the last little wisp of cloud, we got some beautiful diffused light and there's gorgeous contrast across that far dune. And I love how most of that last dune is in shadow with just the top of it, with that wind sweeping the sand across, has some beautiful light, and then the foreground has this gorgeous texture catching that same warm light. And then the background is the um, dramatic sky, which I'm gonna darken down in post. I liked it before, as you can see off in the distance, we have a lot more darkness and a lot more uh, mood in that sky. I like that better. So I'll probably end up darkening down the sky, give a little bit more contrast between that background and that front peak. Gosh. I almost didn't come on this trip. I looked for every reason, every excuse not to come out here. It's supposed to snow, it's gonna be cold, it's gonna suck. I don't even have my tent set up yet. I think I've got a good image in the bag, so I should probably set up my tent. I really don't wanna set up my tent. This might be the only good light I get. <laughs> this clouds are supposed to come back, so I'm gonna make the most of it. If I gotta set up in the dark, I gotta set up in the dark. Let's keep looking.
was in such a rush that I didn't close my bag. So everything is already covered in sand and I'm two hours into this trip. Okay, well, it didn't take long at all to find that next composition. I gotta stand this way because otherwise you'll never hear me with this wind. If you look in the distance, you'll see this giant sweeping dune, which I'm real glad I didn't have to walk up. And it's catching gorgeous side light and the rest of it's thrown into shadow. And then you've got these ripples of light across the other sand dunes. The light is at the perfect angle right now to illuminate those dunes. I put on the 70 to 200. I'm at about 135 in a horizontal composition. I'll probably crop it to a 16 by nine. Almost positive this will end up being a black and white. Let's see. I think there's at least one good image. <laughs> Feels good to get one in the bag uh, before you even get the tent set up. Cause like I said, once these storms roll through, I don't know if I'll get light for the rest of this trip. Um, and the last time that I was out here and camped, that's exactly what happened. I think I had five minutes of good light just like this uh, and it was gone and it did not come back. So I wanted to make the most of it. Hopefully my stuff's not buried. Now I do want to talk quickly about why it's so great to be able to come out here and camp. This is a 22 square mile field of dunes and I am the only person as far as the eye can see. There are no footsteps besides my own and the wind is so strong that even my own footsteps are gone within a couple of hours. So I could just explore these dunes for hours a day, getting unique compositions um, and nobody else is out here. There's a limited number of permits that they award and there really aren't that many photographers crazy enough to come all the way out here. <laughs> <laughs> and do this so you get the opportunity to make some unique images and I highly encourage it if you have the opportunity to come out here spend a couple nights but let's go get that tent set up see what we can do for sunset okay well that was eventful to say the least <laughs> I got about halfway through setting up my tent uh, a gust of wind came ripped it out of the ground the stakes went flying and the tent just started rolling away from me uh, I caught it and then I started walking around with the tent in my hands, fighting it like a sail, looking for a low spot in the dunes, trying to hide behind dunes. The wind keeps changing direction, there's nowhere I could go. So I decided I only had two options. One was to give up, go home. The other was to fill my tent with sand. <laughs> I've got a couple hundred pounds of sand in my tent, every corner, all the way around the perimeter and the bottom. Uh, I don't think they have sand fleas here. I really hope they don't have sand fleas here, <laughs> otherwise it's going to be rough. And then I went around the outside and I buried all the corners uh, with sand as well. So, I don't know. If it blows away now, it's just not meant to be. I don't know what else I could do. Usually when I'm at Rocky, I put big rocks in the corner of my tent. Uh, I keep from blowing away. There's no rocks out here. So, uh, I don't know. My, my, my rucksack's in there, my water's in there, and now a whole bunch of sand. So, if it blows away, <laughs> it blows away. I think there's a real good chance you're going to see me shooting at sunset and watching my tent blow off in the distance rolling through these dunes, but yeah, it's going to be an adventure. Okay, so I have to move. I have to move really quick. So the goal is I'm gonna start working my way up this ridge. We've got incredible light coming through just like I hoped. Look at that sand flying off the side and then really dramatic storm clouds in the background. The problem is that light's not gonna last. So my plan is I'm gonna work my way up this ridge because you can't work backwards. Once you damage it with your footprints, it's done. So I'm gonna start back here. I'm gonna take a couple shots and I'm just gonna work my way up for as long as that light lasts. So glad I don't have my new camera. <laughs> All right. We've got the 24 to 70 on. I'm gonna go pretty wide here because I love this leading line into the scene. I wanna catch all that drama. So I'm gonna go extra wide, fill my foreground. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. All right. Wow. You could just barely see the mountain peaks in the background. It's just incredible. I'm at ISO 160, F11, 1 100th of a shutter, uh, 1 100th of a second. And I am going to have to focus stack.
gosh, that light is just phenomenal. All right, and I'm gonna do one wide, or one in landscape, just because there is some beautiful light catching the side of that dune. Oh, that is it. I wanna get more in line though. This line here really needs to run up the scene. There we go. Oh man. Yep, much better. Wow, just incredible. The light's getting even better. I'm gonna work my way up to the next spot. I'm gonna move about 20 feet. Let's go. I get just in front of that little curve there. That's perfect. Oh, yes. Oh boy. I couldn't have asked for better light. This is insane. I'll be honest, I'm struggling with the composition because I have this leading line, but the best of the light is off to the left of the scene. So it's really difficult to frame it in a way that the leading line isn't pulling me out of the scene. Okay, so that light has started to go behind the cloud. Which is a good thing, because I need to go grab all the rest of my stuff, move up, and I think we probably have 20 or so minutes until that light comes back. I think I'm gonna go back and shoot the composition that we shot earlier. And the reason is that composition was perfect. Everything was central through the scene. You had the beautiful sweeping sand, which is gonna be even more intense now, but now you have that color in the sky that we didn't have before, and it adds that drama we were looking for. The key ingredient though is gonna be that light. If it doesn't come back, the image isn't gonna work. So I don't think there's anything worth waiting for here. I don't know if you can see, but the snow-covered peaks are in the background and they kind of peek through a little bit, but I don't think it's gonna be enough when that sun comes down to make the scene interesting enough. I think we need that foreground interest and then we need the subject coming up the center of the scene. I really like that composition more. So I'm not even gonna lie to you, seeing these clouds move off is making me so happy. <laughs> My tent is in tatters right now, it's barely hanging on. If that rain and snow comes down on me tonight, I'm, I'm gonna get soaked and I'm gonna be very cold and I'm gonna have a very bad night. So seeing all this move off and seeing blue skies in that direction, it's giving me a little bit of hope. I might survive the night. And it's good news, if you're seeing this video, it means I made it. All right, yeah, let's go back down. I, I think this is as good as it's gonna get up here. Let's go check out the bottom. A little bit of good news, a little bit of bad news. Good news is, I made the right decision coming down here. That light is freaking phenomenal. It is gorgeous the way it's illuminating these dunes. Bad news is I've been running around these dunes for seven hours and I've got a terrible muscle spasm in my quad and it hurts so bad. Oh, oh my goodness. All right, so you see this little piece of grass right here. I really like that detail, but I can't go this way because I'll blow out the highlights. So I'm just trying to frame it up to where I can keep that interest in the foreground without getting the sun in my shot. All right, so I'm at about 24 millimeters, F11, 140th of a second, ISO 160. You got the white knuckles. 
Yes, I'm laying down because my legs, <laughs> my legs won't move anymore. So this works well. So I think the first image I captured when I set down my tripod here was actually the best. The light was this deep golden color and the sky was this deep blue. There's a little bit of, so, um, a little bit of flare, but it lands right in the darkest spot. So I should just be able to clone it out without much issue. If I can, that's going to be the shot of the day because it looks, oh. It looks gorgeous on the back of the screen. The light now is a little bit flatter, a little bit softer. It's still gonna be a nice image, but it doesn't have that dynamic draw that the other image has. Oh, oh my poor leggies. Quick, 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 quick. Before that sun drops. Okay, so just trying to capture this last little bit of the texture because I love the light that's hitting the dunes off in the distance. Oh my goodness, my tripod won't open. Oh, oh man. Oh man. Shoot. My poor tripod. Ah, oh. eh, I'm losing it. Unfortunately, I don't think I'll get it. That might work. Yeah, I like this. So let me get the image and then I'll walk you through it. Gosh, I just missed it. I think the image still works, but if I had gotten that last little bit of golden light. So this composition, I'm just following this dune here. I got the texture. And then I'm just getting that last little bit of golden light that's off on the distance. And then it ends at the peak on top. So it's a vertical uh, composition, F11, one eighth of a second. But I think I just missed that last little bit of golden light. There's still a little bit, might be able to bring it out in post, but if I had just been about 30 seconds faster. I could have gotten that one. What an incredible place. It's unforgiving. It's brutal. <laughs> it's difficult. Man, it's beautiful. I really enjoyed this composition. However, it really needed that little bit of warm glow in the bottom left to balance the image. Even still, given the conditions I had throughout the day, I really can't complain. As the sun set, I limped back to my tent, returned some sand back to the dunes, and set in for what I hoped would be a good night's rest. Unfortunately, those storms did come through. I woke up in the middle of the night with my rain fly being ripped from the tent. It was about two o'clock in the morning and it was chucking down rain and sleet. It was extremely cold. In a rush, I grabbed the only thing I could find, my tripod. I dug a hole with my hands, I tied the rain fly to the tripod and I buried it. To my pleasant surprise, this actually worked. I stayed dry for the rest of the night. In the morning, I woke to shoot sunrise, but the conditions sucked and so did my images. After sunrise, I saw that the rain wasn't going to stop, so I made the decision to pack up and head back to my truck. When I got there, I had a brief break in the clouds, I threw my stuff in the truck, grabbed my 8x10 camera, and I rushed out for a shot. If those images don't suck, you'll see them in next week's video once I develop the film. As always, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and more importantly, the images. Have a fantastic weekend. Now get out there and make some images.